On today's show, we're going to build this awesome blast from the past four in a row game. I win. Hit it! My family and I love playing games, especially outdoor games and oversized games. So when I had a chance to build a four in a row game like this, I jumped on it. Now let me show you how it works. Now most people are already familiar with how this game works, but ultimately you drop the little pieces in. We've just got these little plywood discs here and you try to get four in a row. And then once you need to clear the board, you just move this little piece to the side and the pieces just fall out uh, pretty much like the original game. So cool stuff. Now the project is made from quarter inch and half inch plywood. And once again, we'll make the entire thing in the back of this 2017 Honda Ridgeline. You'll need one sheet of half inch ply and one sheet of quarter inch ply to get the job done. Start by cutting the quarter inch sheet into two 30 inch wide main panels and cut the half inch panel at about 36 inches. Turn it 90 degrees and then cut all the legs, dividers, divider ends and rails. Now set up the chop saw and cut the various parts to length. Now let's work on the main panels. With a sacrificial surface to work on, I stack the quarter inch main panels together and clamp the whole thing down. Using the drawing for reference, I lay out the grid of center points for each circle cutout. Set up a quarter inch drill bit for a roughly 5 8 deep hole. It has to be deep enough to go into the sacrificial material below. Drill a hole at each crosshair. To cut the holes, we'll use a router and a shop-made trammel arm. Take a piece of scrap and draw a crosshair a few inches from the edge. Drill a quarter inch hole all the way through. Now measure back from the outside edge of that hole two inches or half the diameter of our four inch circles. Drill another quarter inch hole. This hole is for the quarter inch dowel that'll serve as our pivot anchor. Place the pin in one of the holes and drop the trammel arm on top. I drop the router bit into the other hole and you can see how the setup will allow us to cut perfect circles. Secure the router to the arm using some double stick tape and you're off to the races. With everything in position and the router turned on, I lower it into the work, cutting through both quarter inch panels. Now it's just a matter of rotating the router and keeping the pivot pin securely in place. You'll know you're done when you hear and feel the bit stop cutting. And just do that 41 more times and it should look something like this. Now to make the discs. We'll use the same technique, only we'll move our pivot hole to two and a half inches from our bit to create a five inch disc. Just ignore that third hole up top, that was a mistake. And just like before, we cut the circle, only this time the keeper is the circular disc. Once again, you'll need to do that 41 times. And once you get into the groove, it's really not that bad. As an alternative, you could use hole saws to make the main panel holes and the discs. Now let's assemble. Attach the divider strips with glue and secure with some brad nails. Add some glue to the top face of the dividers and bring in the other main panel and secure it in place. Attach the release rail supports to the bottom of the panel assembly. These pieces will support the release rail as it moves back and forth. To construct the release rail, put the two rail strips on either face of the game panel and make them flush at the right side. Now clamp very lightly to prevent them from moving. Install the first release cleat right against the support and attach to the release strips. Now you can use brad nails for this, but you're actually better off using screws for additional strength and that's something I found out after the fact. Each additional rail cleat is installed to the left of the other cleats that we already attached. The bottom of the leg receives two bolt holes. The same holes are drilled into the center of our leg base pieces. And speaking of the base pieces, dog ear the corners on each side. Apply a nice bead of glue to the side and drop on the leg. Tack it in place so it doesn't move and then pre-drill and countersink for a series of screws. To attach the leg base, we'll use a couple of bolts. This will make it easier to disassemble and store the game flat if we ever need to in the future. With both legs attached, the game board is complete. Now sand all of the discs thoroughly so that they slide freely in the game board. And use a dark stain or paint to make half of the discs a different color. I'm just using water-based dye. And now for a quick test run. Hey, look at that, it works. If you want to build this four in a row game, you could download the free plans at our website, thewoodwhisperer.com. Now it's game time. 